In this tutorial of iDraw for the iPad, I'm going to talk about rotation and how you can create a pattern using a rotation. I have created a document ahead of time. Um, if you wish to see a tutorial on how to create this particular document, please go and watch my video on iDraw document settings. First thing that I'm going to do is create a new layer for my shape. I'm going to go over to my layers palette and I'm going to click on the plus sign on the top right. I'm going to make sure that this layer is underneath my grid lines so that I'm able to see my grid lines at all times. I'm going to go ahead and call this layer pattern. Now that I've created my layer, I'm ready to create my first shape. I'm going to go over to the Polygon tool. The Polygon tool is located on the left-hand side, and a polygon is essentially a shape that has multiple sides. At the bottom of your screen, you should see this menu asking you how many sides you want your polygon to have. I clicked on three because I want to create a triangle. I'm now ready to create my triangle, so I'm going to pick a color for the inside, and I'm going to drag my finger. I want to point out that as you're drawing, you're going to see these numbers. That represents the size of your shape. My shape right now measures about an inch by an inch. I'm going to go ahead and let go. The first way that you can rotate an object is by grabbing your arrow tool, and then you are going to see these little orange points on your shape. These orange points represent your rotation. Go ahead and click on that and drag your finger. As you are rotating, you're going to notice that it tells you what your angle of rotation is. So that is the first way to rotate an object. I'm going to undo by clicking my back arrow, my undo arrow. The other way that you can rotate an object is by first selecting it and then you're going to go over to the rotation tool which is located on the left hand side with your other tools. This is the rotation tool and it has a little arrow on it. Go ahead and click on it. Once you click on the rotation tool, on the bottom left you're going to see this menu. This menu represents how many degrees you want to rotate by. The advantage of using the rotate tool is that it lets you rotate by a specific number of degrees. So for example, if I want to rotate 45 degrees to the right, I enter 45 degrees and then I click rotate. Now you may notice that there is a little crosshair that shows up on your screen. This crosshair represents the point of rotation where your object is being rotated. For example, if I take that point of rotation and I change it to a different place, for example, I'm going to go ahead and take that and I'm going to click somewhere else. I'm going to go ahead and place this point at the tip of my triangle instead by just clicking on the point of the triangle. If I do that, my triangle will now rotate on that axis. So I'm going to go ahead and hit rotate. I'm going to hit rotate again. And as you can see, the triangle is now rotating along that point. If I hit copy, my triangle is going to be duplicated along that point and rotated by 45 degrees each time that it is copied. I'm going to go ahead and undo this pattern now and I'm going to show you how to create a pattern that rotates from the center of your document. So I'm going to go ahead and undo and I'm going to be left with one triangle. Again, I'm going to go ahead and select my triangle. Once I have my triangle selected, I'm going to go ahead and use these grid lines that I created earlier. I'm going to go ahead and place this triangle on the zero degree line. And I'm going to manually rotate it so that it is aligned with that grid line. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to create a pattern. First, go ahead and select your 
triangle. Next, click on the rotation tool. And you want to move your point of rotation to the center of your document. I marked my center of rotation earlier so that I would know where to put my my axis. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the center of my document and if I want to be more precise I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a lot further. Once I zoom in I'm able to see that my point of rotation is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that point and I'm going to drag my finger to, towards the center of my screen. On the right hand side on the top I see what's underneath my finger with the zoom tool. This shows up whenever you press down your finger. So I'm going to go ahead and let go once I know that that's been centered. I'm zooming out by pinching my fingers together. And I'm going to zoom out so I can see the entire document. Now that I have moved my point of rotation to the center of my document, I'm going to go ahead and hit copy. Each time that I hit copy, this triangle is going to be rotated by 45 degrees each time until it goes all the way around. I have marked the angle of rotation. That way you guys can see how it's being rotated. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy, copy, copy. And because the point of rotation is in the center, it has created a pattern that goes around the center. So this is the first way that you can create a pattern. I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these shapes and turn them into a single shape. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my arrow tool and I'm going to drag my finger all the way from one edge to the other so that I can select all these objects at the same time. I'm going to go over to my layers and I'm going to open up this layer by clicking on the arrow. As you can see, my pattern is made up of all these little shapes. If I wanted to change the color of all of them, I would have to select them all each time. But there is a way to be able to select them all at once. I'm going to close this. Once they're all selected, you're going to go over to the right hand side to this particular menu right here. Now you have several options. You're going to go to the second choice, which is combine. There's a couple of ways of combining this shape into a single shape. For now, we're going to go ahead and click on make compound path. So even though this shape is made up of a lot of different shapes, it is now a single shape. I'm going to go over to my layers. And as you can see, when I open up, I now have a single shape. There's no longer all the different ones. If I click on the little eye, it turns off all the shapes at the same time. The advantage of doing it this way is that I can now change the color of all of them at the same time. If I select my shapes first, I can now make them all a different color at the same time. I can also put a gradient inside all of them at the same time. That is one of the advantages of combining your shapes into a single shape. I want to point out that when you use the choice that says make a compound path, you are going to end up with outlines all the way around. So even in the areas where your shapes overlap, you're gonna, those lines are going to stay there. There is another choice that you can use when combining shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and undo, and I'm going to go back to where all my shapes were separate. Now, as you notice, I have these triangles that overlap right here. I'm going to make sure that everything is selected, which it is. And this time, instead of clicking Make a Compound Path, I'm going to try Union. Union is going to take everything and combine it into a single shape, but these areas that overlap will no longer be separate. And let me show you what that means the corners of my triangles have merged together to form a single shape. So that is the difference between using make a compound path versus union. If I go over to my layers, you will see that my shapes are all again on a single layer. So I'm able to play with them all together at the same time. 
once I have created this pattern, I'm able to rotate it however I want. Um, I can use either the rotation tool or I can grab this orange point and rotate it. Um, this time I'm rotating by half of 45 degrees. Maybe I want to rotate by a full 45 degrees in this direction. Once I have a pattern, I'm able to do anything I want with it. For example, right now I am going to create a copy of this pattern. Go ahead and select your pattern by clicking on it. Go over to your layers palette. At the bottom of your layers palette, you will see a gear. When you click on that gear, you will have the choice to duplicate. Go ahead and click duplicate. And I now have two copies of the same pattern. I'm going to change the color of one of them. I'm able to rotate and continue playing with my patterns. This concludes the tutorial on how to create a rotating pattern on iDraw for the iPad.